Hi there, your computer friend Connie here. Welcome to this lesson on how to create a document library in Microsoft Teams. Now, in case you've missed it, there is a video already in my channel for what is a document library and why you'd want to create one. So be sure to watch that one first. And if you've already done that, then we're just going to jump right into it here and create a document library. I'm going to give you three examples. And the first one is going to be within my instructors team and in my training channel. So I want to make a document library which is a separate area for my files when I'm talking about seminars that I teach. So rather than adding my seminar files that I use to this list of files, I want to keep a separate spot for it. So the first thing I need to do to create that document library is I need to go to open in SharePoint. And so by the way, I'm in the files area already, right? So then I go to open in SharePoint because that's really what's going to create the document library for us is the SharePoint. So now I'm seeing the same files in SharePoint and from SharePoint, I'm going to go to the home area on the top left here. And then from this area, I'm going to go to the new button and choose document library. So let's name this document library to represent the files that we're going to find in it. I'm going to name it seminars. Okay. And just choose create. All right. I could do more work in here, but I'm going to go back to teams just to show you how this works within teams. So let me just minimize this. So I'm back in Teams. I've created the document library for seminars, but I'm not seeing it yet. I need to add it to my team. And in fact, I need to add it as a tab at the top of my team. So right up top here. So I'm going to go to the plus sign in my Teams channel here for training. I'm going to choose SharePoint. It happens to be showing there at the beginning. If yours isn't showing right away, just search for it by typing it in. And then from here, I'm going to go to where it says document libraries. And so you can see seminars is available to me as a document library. It's finding within this team or the SharePoint site. So let's choose that. And so we see an empty area for us to house our files in. I'm going to move this tab over here to be beside my files area. Okay. And now I'm just going to drag a bunch of files I have ready into this library. So it shows it's uploading 10 items there. Okay. So we have all 10 items that I dragged over here in the document library now. So this creates a separation that I want for my files within this channel. So within the training channel, I can now just go to files and just see my general files for training in here, or I can go to seminars at the top and then see files that are specific to seminars as well. And I can rename this by the way, to say seminar files if I, if I wish to. Okay. So that's our exam, our first example on creating a document library within your team's environment. Let's do another example of a document library for a different reason. So this example is in, within my human resources team. I have a recruiting channel. I want to add a document library at the top just for the resumes. So I can keep extra information on those resumes, more columns that won't really fit with the other channels I have. Okay. So let's, let's do that together. So I'm going to go open in SharePoint and then we'll go to home again. And from home, we want to choose the plus sign new and choose document library. And we'll call this document library resumes. Okay. So let's minimize and go to our team. I'm going to hit the plus sign to add in that document library. So once I've chosen SharePoint, I'm going to choose document libraries and resumes is showing there as one of the libraries I have available. Hit save. And now it's a tab at the top. So I already have resume files in my files area. I want to move them over here. So let's do a quick example of how you would do that. And then we're going to add a column or a couple of columns about our resumes to give us further information on them. So back in files, I'll just select the resumes and then I'm going to choose move to. And so right now I'm in the recruiting channel of my team and the files area. So I want to go up to one other level, which is documents in general for my team. And I'm not seeing that resume folder showing up in here because I need to go to the team itself. And then resumes is a separate folder or document library as we created it in SharePoint. So I'll choose move here. It says move to seven items. So let's go to resumes and we see them there. So let's add a couple of columns just so we can see the significance of us having a separate area for these resumes. Aside from separating them, we can make, uh, we can give ourselves extra information about these files that we don't want to show in other files areas. So let's add a column for like, the date resume was received. So I'm going to choose date and time, save. 
and then we'll add another column for the type of job they're applying for. So we'll make it a choice column and we'll change our choices. Okay, so I've got three choices in there. That's a good start. So I'm going to save that. Okay, I filled a few details in these columns for us to look at. If you need further information on how to create these columns and how to fill them in, then please watch my other video about column creation within the files area of your team's environment. So let's uh, let's just notice now though that within the resume area of this document library of our teams, this these columns, jobs applied for and date received, are not going to show up in the files area of this channel or any other channel. And that's what makes this document and library is so special is it separating the columns that we're using okay so I'm in the files area now and you see that those other columns are not showing there if I go to the files area of another one of my channels like the general channel again this files area is the same as any files area in any channel of this team so that's what makes that that document library so special is it's letting us have a different layout for our files different columns for our files all right, I want to create one more document library with you. And this one is for the purpose of changing the permissions. Maybe I need a different document library within my team because I want different people to have access to the files. And so by different people, I still mean they have to be part of the team, but maybe there's a smaller group of them that I want to have access, or maybe I want to change the access rights of some of the people. So right now by default in a team anybody can add or edit files so our example could be that I'm going to create another document library where you know maybe only a couple of people can add or edit and everybody else can only read so I'm changing the permissions that could be one scenario another one could be let's say I have 10 people in my human resources team when I make this document library I only want five of them to have access to it so now I'm changing how many people can even see it so that's what I mean by permissions. So the example we're going to create for a document library is within the human resources team again. And under performance management, we want to have a separate area for employee reviews that are completed. And so in this case, we'll say that we have different rights for the people that are part of this team. And let's even say different members um, that so less people that can see these documents. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create that document library with you right now. We're going to go to open in SharePoint and from SharePoint, you know, we're going to go to the home button from this home button. We're going to go to the plus sign for new and then choose document library again. And this time we're going to call it employee reviews and choose create. Now, before I go out of this and add in my files, I actually do want to be in SharePoint to change the permissions. I can't really do it to the same degree within the team's environment. So to do that, I'm going to go to the gear at the top right of my SharePoint area. And then from the menu, I'm going to choose library settings. OK, and once I get this, I want to choose more library settings. And now I have a big screen of choices for what I can do with my document library. So there's lots of settings here. The one we're going to focus on is the permissions for this document library, which is right in the middle here. Now, by default, because this is coming from a team's environment, you would have three permission levels. You'll always have owners, members and visitors. In this example, I'm showing you I have created a couple of extra permission levels that are available to me here. Now there's a lot we can do with permissions. I'm going to keep this example pretty simple. And what I want to focus on is for this document library, I want the owners of the team to be able to edit and have any a full control over the files and the members to have read only and the visitors to have no access. They can't even see it. And so these other two groups that we're seeing here, I don't want them to have access either. So the first thing I need to do is I have to go to the toolbar at the top and choose stop inheriting permissions. So that just means that whatever is happening throughout the team, I want to have it to stop doing the same as the rest of the team environment, stop inheriting the rights of everything else because I want to make this separate and very unique. Okay, so stop inheriting permissions. And then I need to get rid of the permissions that are not valid in this document library. So I said visitors are not going to be allowed into this document library. They won't see any of these documents. And we also said these other two groups, we don't need them to see the document library either. So I'm going to choose from the menu up top here, which is only available now because I stopped 
inheriting permissions. I'm going to choose remove user permissions. So these groups will no longer be valid. Okay, so now I only have two groups that have access to this document library. And of these two groups, the owners, the permission level they have right now, full control is perfectly fine. Uh, the ones that I want to change are the members. So I'm going to choose human resources members and I'm going to edit their user permissions. So now I'm in a screen that lets me change the permissions. So I want to change it from edit to say read and then choose OK. OK, so to recap, this is a little more complicated with uh, permissions and such. So make sure you know what you're doing here. And we are only affecting the document library. We're only affecting this one area of documents within our team, within our channel. It, this doesn't affect any other channels or any, any other files within our team. OK, so all looks good. So I'm going to close out of here. And now back in my team, I want to add in that document library. So hitting that plus sign, choosing SharePoint, choosing document libraries, choosing the library you want. So employee reviews. I don't usually post about that in the channel, but that's your choice and hit save. All right. So then once I put some files in here, then that means only those two groups will have access to seeing those files and only some of them will be able to edit them uh, based on how we change the permissions of the members. OK, so let's uh, just recap. You've got this document library because of permissions that you wanted to change in terms of who can see what. Under recruiting, you created a document library because you wanted to have a different view, different columns that don't apply to other files within other channels of your team. And then another example we shared was just having another place for your files within your team's environment that separates it from the other files. A great way of using this example is that when you find you have too many folders that just seem to go on for days and rather than giving everybody in that team channel all those folders, try and figure out a way to separate them out and make different tabs tabs at the top that makes sense for them to go to to see that those files separately. All right, so give all that a try. Have fun. Bye-bye.